IQ Season 4 Episode 18. And they're gonna target Gemma and it's not gonna work. Because he's been working out. He's developed guts. This coach is so great. I never I, know, I never get tired of him. It never gets old. His appreciation for others he really has the right priorities. And he's just happy for his junior, happy for his former student, as he would be. Their losing mistake was underestimating Kenma. And now they're going to pay. And I suspect Tora will be central to that whole thing. Episode 18, Trap. The trap is for this opponent team, trapping themselves into thinking Kemba's weak. Okay, <laughs> maybe he's getting tired. This guy may be a snake, but he sure does love his volleyball. He fits right in in the Haiku universe. Damn, look at Kemba going, going down for it. There he is. Here we go again. Yeah, he's running like 8,000 kilometers. Oh, I mean, it is working a little bit. Where's he going to pull it from? Oh, it's a young coach. Perfect is the enemy of the good. And you know he loves loves his coach. There's no way you train under this coach and don't love him. Guts. That was nice. Too much guts. Worry about his footing now. He's able to calculate so quickly. Yeah, you underestimated him. That's tricky. That's really sneaky. Using false errors, false mistakes to get an edge. Just totally pulled the wool over their eyes. <laughs> yeah, Kemba loves guts. He hates losing. And he loves strategizing. This works. He's like Captain Junior. Or uh, Coach Junior. Oh, that's very... Very kind of him to say. That's really inspiring coming from Kemo. He's just so far ahead. I'm like projecting all this, all these emotions in, into these characters that are not maybe there, are not established. Just from my feelings about the coach of Nekoma, watching this rival team's coach sweat, I'm just imagining at least a part of his motivation being just wanting to make his former coach proud. Yeah, they're just playing 3D chess. They have a whole extra dimension. At least he inherited the, the supportiveness from his coach. She seems sweet too. She's taking an interest.
The combo really is such a great match for Carsono. There's a skill here that I, re I really admire. I think it's underrated. It's something I've thought about a lot and it's a source of inspiration and confidence for me. If you have the ability to play the long game where you just have a, a gut instinctual sense and a feeling that you'll figure it out in the long long run. Speaking of how you manage your emotional state, that's a, that's a really powerful one. Like, okay, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it eventually. You put me in here, you throw me into anything. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to succeed eventually if I care to. That's a really nice and powerful place to go conceptually in a time where things aren't necessarily going well or things are not leading to success immediately. That can help mentally compensate the feeling or knowledge that you're not really great at something, not naturally good at something or don't have the experience in something yet. There's a power that that faith can bring. That's what I'm feeling from Kuro right now. My boy's exhausted. Sure, you're not really into volleyball, Kenma. Are we having a moment? <laughs> no, they will not. Everyone's exhausted. Imagine being angry at gravity. Yeah, it's a little off track there. Nothing you can do about gravity. I don't think his guts are in question at this point. Yeah, where does it come from? You are what you practice, I guess. Obviously, I'm reading a translation, so I'm not sure if the English word guts fully captures the nuances of the, the original word in Japanese. But to take that word and look at a, a more general concept of going for it or throwing yourself after something terrifying with full vigor, I think a common way to conceptualize it is that it's something that you summon out of yourself in key moments. But I agree with what I think are Kenma's sentiments, where it, it actually might be more useful to think about it as something practiced as opposed to something kind of spawned out of thin air. Because again, where does it come from? This is maybe a, a weird analogy, but it's just one way I can connect to this idea. Let's say you're at a social event or a bar or something and you see someone that is attractive to you that you'd like to talk to. A lot of people have already lost in that moment because they don't usually do things like that and they're waiting for someone who is really interesting to them that catches their attention and then they kind of stand there and like overthink what they're going to say what they're going to do and they're nervous they're not warmed up they are just throwing themselves into cold water whereas if that same person through the course of their recent life or even even just that night had been approaching everyone even saying hi in a friendly way to whoever without getting into that over analytical trap where you're just spinning your wheels just you know seeing someone saying hi seeing someone saying hi not allowing more than a few seconds to pass before you, you approach someone there wouldn't necessarily even need to be a lot of guts because you just have that momentum you're just in that flow. We talk and think a lot about self-motivation, but actions that form habits, I think, are often way more powerful than any kind of like getting fired up mentally to do something difficult. Of course, that begs the question, how do you even begin? And I think one way through that is to start small, start small and palatable and work up or just jump in. Like I mentioned cold water. I think everyone has the experience of jumping into a, a cold pool. It's very interesting to watch yourself psychologically in that in that moment, because what is the final push? You know, what makes you do it? Nevertheless, you, you end up jumping into the pool and then you get acclimated and there's no issue. If you can somehow force yourself to jump into the cold water and recognize that it's gonna hurt at first and that that's just one step in the process, that also can be really effective. But point is you don't want to save it for the last minute when it really counts. That seems like growth for Tora as well. He has it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough because it's it's his weakness, but he was there. He has it. He's been building it. There's a throwback. It's extra hard coming from from him too. Very poignant sweat drop. Oh, <laughs> he says and he smiles. I guess that's how it feels sometimes. Yeah, who doesn't have guts?
Am I right in that that was from Tora's excellent pass? He's <laughs> such a good senpai, for real. Just loves him. I bet a nice word from this coach would just mean the world to him. Whoa, there you go. That's everything. Yeah, I think I was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to honor the legacy of his amazing coach. That's valid. He's being very humble about it, but... Yeah, I'm, all I see is guts. <laughs> he was he was mad at gravity. He eats banana angrily. He needs time to digest those carbs. It's telling the camera didn't even try to imagine, you know, monsters roaming around in order to get motivated. He's leveled up his motivation. That's what I'm saying. Well, I got, I got good news for you. Got one coming. Oh, we're really close. We're really close. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was this close, though. This is happening. Wait, I want to see that full bracket again. I wish it was a little bit zoomed out, but okay. Maybe the winner of that game goes to, on to play Bokuro's team. Something about that shot of him playing games alone in the classroom made me think that, man, Kenma really... He must have known something subconsciously, or he, he knows. He doesn't articulate what volleyball means to him, or the way he puts it, he could take it or leave it. But no, he, he made such a good choice joining this team. It obviously is doing so much for him. It may not be the game of volleyball itself, but he recognizes that there's something he needs there. It almost feels like a survival instinct. You know, that hunger people have, that recognition people have if they're awake, even if they can't fully shine a light on it and what it is, that there's something that they need to be what they want to be. At some point, I mentioned the idea that if a pursuit is complex enough or if it's deep enough, it will be as good as anything else for modeling the world and life and getting you what you need to grow if you pursue it deeply enough. People who are masters of one trade or one skill often have a lot of insight into life as a whole. I think a lot of times if pursuits are engaging, it's because on some level they're a fractal for life. And so you focus on this subset of the world, you get insight and patterns and you realize that those are, are insights and patterns that are reflections of a broader truth. Kenma got that from games, but I think perhaps the missing element there was the, the social. Volleyball is a, another domain of life that complements his existing expertise very well, that is really pushing him into maturity and adulthood and it's really fun to watch. He doesn't even seem to want to acknowledge the growth he's making, because maybe then he'd have to acknowledge the fact that effort is important, undermining a, a long-held worldview, but whether or not he realizes it, he's, he's already already there, or he's getting there really quickly. I really enjoyed these two episodes. I think they're some of my favorite Nakoma episodes so far. It definitely is helping me get much more excited for any upcoming match between these two teams, which feels like destiny.